This summer I am working in Professor William Tisdale's lab looking at lead halide perovskite nanocrystals. My name is Sarai Patterson. I am a material science and engineering student at the University of Utah. I learned two completely different methods for synthesizing quantum dots and I was able to use different characterization methods to directly compare them and actually look at them at what I had made in a high power microscope. Perovskite quantum dots are especially useful because they are extremely easy to make at a low cost. The perovskite quantum dots that I'm working with have shown a lot of promise for solar cell technology, which is primarily why I'm interested in quantum dots. A layer of perovskite material in a solar cell can be used as an absorbing material to absorb light, which is a key component of photovoltaic cells. Quantum dots are crystals, called nanocrystals, that become luminescent when we shine light on them. Perovskite quantum dots also emit a bright and pure color, which makes them very useful for LEDs and display technologies like liquid crystal display televisions and cell phones, for example. And we can easily change the color of light that they emit just by changing the size of the quantum dot. The quantum dots that I am trying to make are around 10 nanometers. And so that means that if you lined up 3 million of them, they would fit across the width of your thumb. I definitely have quantum dots. For any of these applications, it is very important that charge carriers like electrons can easily move between quantum dots. But this electron motion is impeded by the ligands that are attached to the quantum dot itself. Ligands are chain-like molecules that attach to the quantum dot crystal. These ligands are very important for the stability of the quantum dots, but they detract from other important properties, such as the transfer of electrons through the quantum dot solids. My research this summer has focused on decreasing the length of these ligands to study the effect that that has on the properties of the quantum dot films. I can either do this by synthesizing quantum dots with shorter ligands or by exchanging them for shorter ligands after synthesis. And I have tried both methods this summer with varying success. I have quite a bit of experience with characterization because I worked in a characterization lab for two years. But this summer is my first time using transmission electron microscopy. I also gained a lot of experience with wet chemistry, coding, data and image analysis, and just planning and executing controlled experiments. Gaining the skill to work with transmission electron microscopy allowed me to look at the quantum dots I made, almost down to the individual atom level. Before this summer, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go to grad school, but I found that I enjoy working in academia a lot more than I expected. This was also my first experience working with quantum dots, or perovskites, and I really enjoyed this experience. It's something I definitely would consider continuing in grad school. I can't remember the last time I've learned so much in such a short amount of time, and I'm definitely strongly considering going back to school for a PhD after this experience.